Christmas time, kids. The clock is ticking. Hey guys, welcome to episode number six. Wow, still going of the Schmo Down Rundown. My name is Aaron. I am your host, as always, for this wonderful, amazing, very calm show. And with me, I am joined. Uh, Frank couldn't join us this week. Had a last-minute thing, as happens in life. That's how it goes. I am joined by two esteemed panelists this week. I have, first of all, he makes a lot of trailers in Schmoville. You know him. You love him. He was on the first episode. Matt Kearns, what's going on, dude? What's up, guys? It's good to be back to talk about the Schmodown. There you have it. There you have it. And making his grand return to talking schmoes and all that kind of good stuff. You know him. You love him. Paul Wolf. what's going on, buddy? Hey, guys. Thank you for having me. And hey, Schmoville, what's going on? It's been a long time. There it is. He's back later this <laughs> for this time. Let's just put it that way. All right. Well, guys, I mean, a lot of stuff going down this week. We had a tag title match. Ooh, mind blower there. We had uh, some new blood in the singles competition. But before we get there, uh, you know, Christian announced a couple weeks ago that there will be an inner geekdom championship at the Schmodown Spectacular. It will involve five competitors. We didn't know who it was going to be. We didn't know what was going on. You know, a lot of speculation out there. Would it be Robert Meyer Burnett? Would it be Jason Inman? We've got three of the five officially announced. Let me go through them real quick. We've got Hector Navarro from Superhero News, Ashley V. Robinson from Heroes, Collider Heroes, and yesterday it was announced and confirmed that Jeremy Johns will be joining the Inner Geekdom Championship, Fatal Five-Way Battle Royal, whatever you want to call it. So, Matt, let me start with you on this. You see these three competitors. Are you enthralled? Are you happy? Are you sad? What are your thoughts? I am very happy and very excited. These competitors, this is like when Christian, you know, teased this happening. Uh, these weren't exactly – I know Jeremy Johns I was thinking about, but like – and even Hector, but like this is something where I'm like, I can't wait to see this because all these people know their stuff. And it's going to be, I'm really interested in just seeing how this is going to operate. You know, like, is it going to be like one-on-one -on -one situation? Then you go, you know, is it going to, that's what I'm looking forward to. But like this pairing up so far is great. I'm really looking forward to this match. Right on. Paul, what do you got? Yeah, when I first I saw that last night, I uh, saw that Jeremy Johns was joining and I immediately like perked up like he's super entertaining. He has had the same background as uh, the, the Schmoes. I mean, coming up from the underground and and working his way up to, you know, working now with the Schmoes and with uh, Collider. Um, and then hearing Nervaro's name. I mean, even Sasha said that, too, on uh, the the. Uh, Schmo's no show. Like he's he's a force, and to see who the other two might be uh, could could make it uh, very interesting. Like you said, Robert Burnett. I mean, that was the first name that popped into my head. I wouldn't even mind seeing a return of uh, Cody Miller because he's a big uh, Potter oh, okay. fan. Uh, just for a one-off thing, you know, that would be cool, and maybe even somebody from Screen Junkies just to be put into that fifth spot. I mean, Schnepp could be another one. I mean, there's so many different things. I honestly wouldn't mind seeing um, Ann Campia just to see. Okay. Just sure. as a change, just to see something there. Uh, but, I mean, I, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. And I, to me, when I see that, I'm thinking it's going to be like a Jeopardy game. And they all are going to gonna have, like, buzzers and stuff. And whoever chimes mm -hmm. in first gets points. Something like that. So yeah. um, that's that's kind of where I'm thinking it's going to be. Or um, I don't know if a family feud thing might not work because it'll be, you know, it has to be basically one on one winner take all. So uh, yeah. if they all have buzzers, they all just chime in when they get an answer. I think that's what uh, what they're going to do. Uh, from what I know, it's going to be like the um, like they're doing the, the thing this weekend with the fan, the fan schmo down. So I, I believe they're going to start with all five. They're going to ask like general questions. They're going to get down to two. And then the two competitors are going to go at it yeah. for the championship. That's my understanding of it. Okay. Um, so that that is going to be very interesting. I know that Jason Inman on Twitter this week threw his name out in the hat that he said he was tweeting that he said he would love to take down Jeremy Johns. So I mean, we there's a very good possibility that we could see Jason Inman little family feud action going up against his own you know lovely wife Ashley B. Robinson. So. 
I mean, there you go. There's a storyline in itself. As for the other two competitors, I, man, I don't know. They could pull anybody. You could pull a Scott Mance if you want to do Star Trek, and just for his personality, you could pull a Scott Mance, put him in there. Uh, you know, Schnepp, if you want. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you want. But, uh, yeah, I know. Matt, you got any idea of any other competitors you'd like to see in there? Um, you know, mostly just because I know he's already playing in the um, the Star Wars schmo down there in the Spectacular. I'd love to see John Campia come back. Because I think even though he actually, you know, you have to remember, he played Dan Merle, who is now the champ. He didn't play the greatest game. It was his first time. I kind of hate that he kind of was all one and done with it. I would love to see him come back. And he does he does know his geek stuff. You know, he's on Heroes. He's on Jedi Council. So I think he could be a, a worthy opponent. And I would just love to see him play Jeremy Johns. That's something I would want to see. Uh, well, you know, okay. Well, I'm not too far off with you there. I'm kind of on Paul's line of thinking. Anne Campia greater than John Campia is, is my opinion I like right Anne now. in that Harry Potter trivia on the show. She was really good, so I, I would be okay with seeing that. And then it would also be good to get you know more ladies in the schmodown. So yeah, the, more, the more the merrier, I say. Yeah. So. All right, well, before we jump into the actual main uh, recaps of the show, I just want to take a second. Um, Frank and I, you know, Frank's obviously not on the show, so this was pre-recorded. We got to sit down. With Baby Carrots himself, Mark Ellis, for a brief interview. So definitely uh, check that out. I have to preface this by saying that we recorded this earlier in the week. So this was before the results of the tag title match. So at the time, Mark and Christian were still the tag team champions. So just kind of take that into account and enjoy this interview with myself, Frank, and Mark Ellis. All right, guys, we have an exclusive guest with us this week. He is one half of the face that runs the place, if you will. He is one half of the Schmodown Tag Team Champions, the ultimate Schmodown Tournament Champion, the number one contender for the movie yeah. trivia Schmodown Championship. Is that enough accolades? I don't know. We'll find yeah, out. I, I, Baby Carrots himself, <laughs> merely Mark Ellis. Welcome to the show, sir. Oh, thank you. I appreciate you guys having me. I mean, you know, if I got to win a championship just to be able to be a guest on the show, then I guess that's what I got to do. Well, we did have John Roke on before, and it didn't really work out for him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, it's all about oh, him from there. Oopsie daisy. Right. <laughs> I hope, we, hope we didn't jinx you. Well, you know, I wanted to start off first of all. I mean, the Schmodown, obviously, especially in this iteration, has been leaps and bounds. You're not sitting on the couch anymore. You're not pulling names out of a hat. You know, from where it was then to where it is now, you know, and fans being so passionate about it now, did, did you ever see this coming? Was this like... Was this your view for the your guys' view for the Schmodown? What do you think of all this? I mean, I, I could lie and say yes, that's what we thought it was going to be when we initially conceived of it at that pizza joint in Anaheim. But it, you know, once we started talking about it, as far as being like an actual show on Collider, it was it was totally you know Christian's brainchild to be like, no, we should actually do this as like a weekly event and you know make it in the the spirit of of wrestling or ufc or whatever you want to have it and you know i mean i liked it as doing it on our podcast as like a march madness kind of thing and his uh, his, his slightly warped wrestling brain really came into play with it being what it is today and it's nice to have the production values of what we can do with it now match the fan support because it has been overwhelming i mean once you once we saw this thing start to get some steam work oh yeah we can do a lot with this but the fact that the fans come back week after week after week to watch the singles matches and now the team matches and to participate in the memes and the trash talking and the the you know all the social media presence as well it's uh it is a little overwhelming it's pretty exciting yeah, I imagine. I imagine it's a lot different than you thought before. Does your are your shoulders hurting from holding all of those belts now, or is that <laughs> is that like is that something different for you? Do you have like some icy hot on standby just in case? What's what's going on with that? Well, uh, you may not be able to tell from the pictures, but there's only two parts of my body that I'm really proud of, and it's my gorgeous calf muscles and my pretty broad shoulders for a guy my size so my shoulders are doing just fine as of right now i think i will be holding multiple belts for a long time so there's only one way to get used to it and it's and it's pumping the iron or in this case uh lifting belts <laughs> Sound, sounds good i didn't i didn't know that like it wasn't as cool to just wear the belt like, like i always thought it was like the goal was just actually put the belt 
around your waist. And so Christian has to coach me. And he's like, no, 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 you're actually supposed to put it over your shoulder. Like, that's what the champions do. So I'm like, okay, well, it's a belt, so it's supposed to hold pants up. <laughs> makes but. sense, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it seems like that's what the new the new school of wrestlers do these days is put it over their shoulder as opposed to around the waist. I guess around the waist now is considered old-fashioned. Yeah, it, it, it's like those guys you see who just have their pants hiked up, and they're like, you know what, I don't care about the kids anymore. This is how I wore the pants back in my day, right. and um, maybe I'm becoming that guy. If there's a flood, you never know. I mean, geez, you got to be prepared. <laughs> Am I right? Jeez. Yeah. Uh, just a couple more quick things, and I'll jump to Frank for a second. Uh, has Josh McCuga made good on that Taco Bell wager you guys made before your matchup? You know, he was supposed to this uh, this weekend because usually we'll find ourselves at Taco Bell at 2 in the morning after a night out at uh, the various comedy clubs in Los Angeles, and he had a uh, wedding I don't think he was officiating the wedding, but he had some wedding he had to go to on Saturday, and so we just kind of lost uh, lost communication with each other as the night thickened. But um, he will make bet on it, make good on it very soon. So he probably snuck into the wedding. You mean like he probably wasn't even invited? <laughs> he, he, he he's never invited, but he ends up being the favorite guest anyway. So good that's lord, part of his charm. He and Bob Finstock, I can't imagine. <laughs> I don't think Bob Finstock gets invited to too many weddings. I'll tell you that. True story. Uh, okay, this one's kind of off the cuff, but I have to know. Okay, of all the beers, the different assorted beers of craft, international, why Coors Light of all? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not simply a Coors Light man, okay. but when I just want nice liquid cold refreshment, that's the first one I'll go to. It's my favorite light beer, and, uh, you know, more often than not, if you... You just got off the golf course, or you just got done with a long day at work. I don't necessarily want something heavy. I know the kids are all about, oh, let me let me show off and show you what craft beer I'm drinking, what what pumpkin scotch ale I just had that was locally brewed in some guy's bathtub in Seattle. <laughs> and I like some of that stuff, too. But, you know, Coors Light's been around since the late 70s, and it's been around for a reason. So if I want light and refreshing, I'll go Coors Light. If I want to go, like, a heavier, tastier beer, I'll go with something that's an IPA. I'm a big fan of... Uh, of the Stone Brewing Company that's in, uh, it's, it's in between San Diego and LA. They make a really good IPA. They make a beer called Arrogant Bastard, uh, which was not named after John Roca, surprisingly. Oh, oh there you go. That, that does surprise me. <laughs> okay, Frank, I want to kick it to you. I know you got a few questions, and then we'll jump yeah. into some Schmoville questions. Yeah, hey, Mark. Um, so I want to jump into your match a little bit you had with Roca. In the second round of your match, uh, was it ever part of your strategy? to accept the category that you felt was a strength of Roka's if you happened to land on it, or was it something you never thought about until you did land on? It wasn't anything that was too premeditated, Frank, and, uh, and it, it is, it, it's so interesting to watch how well you guys break down the matches. It really is what I like to do with, with, with sports, mm -hmm. and so seeing it happen in something you're participating in is both flattering and a little nerve-wracking at the same time, but I have to dance with a girl that brung me, so to speak. I, I can't suddenly get into a match and over-prepare and try to, you know, fit a strategy for every scenario that might happen. I trust myself on the fly. Um, I've been doing that for a long time, going with my gut in the moment, going extemporaneously. So if I, you know, once I got that, though, and I saw biopics, I was like, this is going to, A, it's going to send a shot across his bow that I'm not afraid of him. And it's also going to potentially take a strength away from him so even if he was going to get a steal he was only going to get one point out of it and but I mean look I, I think I said it in the match too like I think I'm pretty good at biopics I'm not great at it it's not what I would consider a strong suit but I think I would know enough about biopics to be able to navigate my rail uh, around and I'm actually disappointed I didn't do better right. in in the second round but I think the strategy element of it worked yeah, because when you pick biopics and then you come out of that round with just three points, he steals two. Um, it kind of looked like it might have backfired on you. But with that said, um, going into the speed round, you were up by three points, 12 to nine. Did that lead impact you on how you approached the next round? Or was it like an aggressiveness to it? With the speed round, I, I that is one of the things that I, I, I like to think about ahead of time, but it all goes out the window once you're actually in the match because <laughs> I can tell myself I don't want to be too aggressive and buzz in on everything, but at the end of the day, I'm still quick hands zealous. so if I hear something that I think might be right, I'm going to buzz in. 
and I got lucky in the first one that it was a Christmas story, and the Days Confused one, if I hadn't just been such a loud mouth, I probably would have guessed baseball, even though I knew that the, the team is a football team, but I knew that the kid plays baseball, so uh, that, was, that one was on me. I think that was the, the one mistake I made right. in, in the game. Um, and then this is just one little away from the round, my own personal question. How difficult do you think it would be eventually probably to face off against your buddy Christian Harloff? <laughs> Um, I think the trash talk would be pretty good for sure. Uh, <laughs> if we were ever to play each other in a match, um, I think it would obviously, I, I think it would come down to the third round or the fifth round if it was a championship because we both have similar strengths. Maybe, maybe that's why it might be a blowout because if we both are really hoping we get a Star Wars category or a comic book movies category or something like that, then we can take that off the board. But I know with, with, with Christian, I think I would try to defend against him getting an Arnie Sly category if it was on the wheel as best as I possibly could. So you're more maybe defensive than offensive, per se? Yeah, I think so. Or if he considers it offensive for me to take Arnie and Sly <laughs> if I'm lucky enough to spin it because I don't want him getting two points a crack at every one of those questions. Oh, God. All right. Well, we got some questions from uh, Schmoville. If you uh, if you got a second, I'd like to throw a couple at you. Absolutely, man. Okay, my lone tweeter uh, at Disney Marvel fan. I appreciate you being the lone tweeter, sir. Ask, <laughs> what is your strategy to take the championship from Dan Merle? What do you like? What are you looking to do? Well, I would actually rather watch a movie about the lone tweeter than I would the Lone Ranger. Oh, so. oh no, he's got that going in his poor face. army, but, poor uh, army hammer. Oh, jeez. Um, but as far as my strategy goes with Dan, um, he's not a guy that you can psych out, I don't think. He's not a guy whose head you can get into. There's, there's some competitors that they get really amped up before a match, and you know they're jumping up and down backstage or hyping themselves up. And I, I don't think that's going to happen with either one of us. I imagine we're both going to be uh, in the locker room before the game, ready to come out, just looking loose, looking casual. So... There's nothing pre-match you can do to rattle him. It's once you get into the match, you can just play your game. And sometimes we get a little too concerned as far as what the opponent is doing. And at the end of the day, it's just answering the questions that are in front of you. So I think if I can just keep to that ability that I have to answer questions correctly and not worry too much about what Dan is doing on his side of the table, I think I'll be okay. Thank you, Disney Marvel fan, for that question. I have one from Facebook from Eric Frederick. He says, you are well known for your jokes, and it seems some people don't think you know as much as the others, or that you don't take it seriously. Have you set out to prove them wrong and show them how serious you are about your movie knowledge? I think the how serious I am about it speaks to itself. I mean, I, I, I'm holding multiple belts, so I really care about this stuff. I'm very competitive in my life, but as far as knowing more than anybody else, I don't think I know more than anybody else. I just think I'm a damn good player at movie trivia, and I think that I don't need to prove that to anybody else. Like, there's certain things in life that you really want to prove to, you know, either the world at large or somebody that you know, but this is not one of them because I know that that's going to speak for itself after I beat Merle. That you don't you don't stumble into you don't just roll out of bed and be a guy like Dan Merle. You have to care about it. You have to take it seriously, and you have to realize that it is a competition. So I think I got all those boxes checked, and I'm just looking forward to to playing him. But I, I got to be honest, like right now, I'm just happy to have the ultimate Shimano belt, and I'm not thinking about Merle too much just yet. I think that I will ramp up to that once we get into the holiday season. But as of right now, I'm just, you know, I'm happy to be the ultimate Spodown champion. And uh, I'm just, I'm enjoying my baby carrots like the rest of the good people. <laughs> right there. Thanks, Eric, for that question. I have one from Manning Franks who asks, as someone who has previously underestimated you, I can now confidently say you are now a force to be reckoned with. How do you remain <laughs> so calm under pressure? Uh, well, thank you for allowing me to convert uh, you over <laughs> to the good side. It is funny because I've, I've seen a lot of those uh, tweets and Facebook messages that people didn't necessarily take me seriously, but now they do. And look, I don't want to be taken too seriously, okay? I like joking around, <laughs> but as far as the, the coolness under pressure thing, I just 
you know, I think it's always been one of those like innate things that I've been very lucky to have. I don't know where it came from, but I've never really gotten like you know stage fright or anything like that. And I get ex- I get excited. I get I get you know some anxiety before the matches, but uh, I I just I, I know how to focus. I think it's the it's something that when you go back and you look at a lot of great athletes and a lot of great performers and stuff, it's not that they're not nervous or they're not scared. It's just that they're able to block that out of their mind when the big moment comes and hopefully i can do that again against tim duncan made a career out of it so calm under pressure you know that very well tim duncan is one of those guys and it always bugged me when people said that he didn't you know that he's not as competitive as like kevin garnett or he doesn't care about winning as much as the next guy it's like that guy cares more about winning and it's less the amount of trash talk that goes on and it's more about are you in the gym every day are you changing your diet in the off season are you adding muscle are you doing the things necessary when the cameras are not on to be a great teammate to be a great leader to be a great player and tim duncan did all that and so if i can follow in his example even to one one hundredth of what he did then i'll be happy all right well speaking of t if you had a non if you had to pick a non schmo partner this comes from michael rowe who would you want as a partner aside from Dan Merle? Oh man, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, he, he'd be a good pick. There's no bad rather going to battle with than uh, than Harloff, but regardless who else is on the table. But uh, if I had to pick a non, so I have to pick anybody other than you have to pick person? a non schmo. Okay, so if I'm allowed to pick Riley, I would take Riley. But if he is considered a schmo, um. I think another guy I beat is pretty damn good is Sam oh, Levine. Yeah, great pick. Um, I think the out one I would probably get in a fight <laughs> backstage, so we probably couldn't do that one just yet. But, uh, yeah, I might stick with either uh, Riley or, or right, Levine. Cool. You, know, you know what, Clark Wolf, though, actually, I think Clark Wolf has, has some good countermeasures to what I bring to the table as far as her strengths, so Clark Wolf might be a pretty I good one. I think either one of those would be fantastic. This one is uh, this one's my favorite question. It's from uh, Jeremiah Fuerte. Sorry if I butchered your name, sir. Would you rather hold all of the Schmodown Championships, tag titles, world title, soon to be Inner Geekdom Championship, or would you rather the wet, the Redskins win the Super Bowl this year? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a that is a tough one, man. I mean, I, I guess I'll take the Redskins, but you know. That that I I don't want to lose all the belts <laughs> in order for that to happen. Like if I could just lose one of the belts, which and one would you still, lose? Uh, I, I I don't want to <laughs> pick between my kids, but um, you know, I, it, it, here's what I'll say: is that if this was to happen where I could control that outcome, then I would probably take the Redskins winning the Super Bowl simply because I know that without me controlling the outcome. The Redskins have a much worse chance of winning the Super Bowl than I do winning the Schmodown the next year. So I will, uh, I'll go ahead and give the skins another Fair, Super Bowl fair win. enough. Guys, great questions from Schmoville. Mark, as we wind this down, I know that uh, you guys are more than likely going to be at Star Wars Celebration in April. And it just, uh, it just so happens that Star Wars Celebration is being held next year in the city beautiful of Orlando, where I currently reside. That is true. Oh, that I would true? just like to put it on uh, on Front Street. Just went out there. I would like to buy you, sir, a Coors Light. Can we make can we make that happen? <laughs> I would, or a craft beer, whatever you want. I I will make sure I get it to you. I will rectify Wendy Lee's wrong, and I will get you your Coors Light. I mean, it sounded a little condescending when you brought it up initially that, like, you know, why Coors Light? But if you want to buy me one, buy me two, and you can have one, and we can enjoy the simplicity of it, and then we will upgrade to an IPA that I, I will buy well, for you. that sounds amazing. So that sounds like a good time to me. And just for the record, of people that, you know, bet against you, there's one uh, person that you're actually in an interview with right now, not me, of course, because I would never, that actually that actually picked against you. <laughs> And that was Frank. He picked, he picked John Roca, That's and he was wrong. I did. So, so I'll just go ahead and to- toot my own horn there. Well, here's what I'll say to somebody <laughs> like Frank is like, look, even take an example from John Roca's book is that he made himself into the warrior that he is at trivia once the Bespin question happened. So he had a very embarrassing mistake 
in front of the whole world, and he let that make him a better fighter. So, Frank, you had a very embarrassing prediction, not picking me to win. So Here's just, what actually happened, though. When I made my bracket, I actually picked you in my bracket, but once I saw John just on this roll, I, I kind of oh, jumped on the bandwagon. There it is. I'm, I'll say it. I don't care. Well, look, there, to his credit, there's a lot of Outlaw Nation that is staying on that bandwagon. You know, I mean, it's it's not the happiest of bandwagon at the moment. They're they're probably playing some sort of really <laughs> sad Jeff Buckley tune. But yeah, it's still crowded. <laughs> it's still crowded. There, it's still going to be a party going forward. I'm sure he'll get a lot of you know individual wins, not against <laughs> me, but uh, as far as you know, team top ten goes, I, I don't know what their fate is going to be. But I feel like Roca is going to be a guy that people are going to come back to see time and time again. And I'm glad he has the fan base he does, and I'm glad that I could beat his there ass in front of all those fans. <laughs> well, Mark, we'll let you get out of here. Um, you know, tell us what you have coming up. What's going on with – are you uh, going to be out of town? Are you going to be touring? What's going on with Mark Ellis? You coming, you coming to I'll Chicago in town anytime soon? A little bit. We, uh, am I coming where? To Chicago? I will be coming to Chicago in uh, 2017. So right. um, I will definitely be around there. Um, and uh, I am going to be in L.A. for a little bit. We have our big L.A. Comic Con is coming up uh, this uh, Saturday and Sunday. We're doing a Schmo Down panel on Saturday at 5, and then a Schmo No panel on Sunday at 2. And then my next road gig is uh, I'm actually at the La Jolla Comedy Store in San Diego in uh, the middle of November. So, um, you know, but in the meantime, you guys can find me at Mark Ellis Live and, of course, uh, at the YouTube channel. There you go, guys. He so. is the man that holds the most titles in the Schmo down currently. You can catch him Tuesday taking on the top 10 team with his partner in crime, Christian Harloff. He is Mark. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, wait. Aaron, I don't mean to cut you off there, but but I hear you trump that match. It, it, it kind of seems like you guys both pick top 10 to beat Schmo's nose. Is that, is that in any way, uh, shape, or form accurate? Completely. Yeah. I own it. I own it, Mark. That actually is accurate, and I am fully prepared to make this my last show. So, so. <laughs> now, you know, look, look, everybody is going to have to learn from their mistakes eventually. And uh, you guys will be better people for it from now on. So I look forward to uh, embarrassing them and making you guys look a little silly with some egg on your face. But you know what? Fair enough. Ladies and gentlemen, now. Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you guys for everything you do. And uh, thank you for having me. I'd love to Absolutely, come Absolutely, man. Take care. Kicking ass, guys. And we're back, guys. We're going to recap the team match this week, which was an epic tag title showdown between Team Top 10, John Roca and Matt Nose, and the team of the Schmoes, Christian Harloff and Mark Ellis. First thing of note in this match, Kid Knapsack making his collider debut, if you will, on the mic. Good to have the pit boss back, of course. Absolutely. The more Kid Knapsack, the better. That's all. That's that's an equation. The great, you know, kidnaps off greater than all. So we had in the first round, we had team top ten getting five points. The Schmoes getting three. We go. It was a tough battle, man, all throughout. In round two, the top ten rolled eighties movies, pulled in eight points. They went six for six on the questions. The Schmoes got movie release dates, uh -huh. which. <laughs> Well, I'm so, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm wrong. They they got Spinner's Choice, yeah. and there I say chose movie release dates. So let's stop right there. And the dumpster fire begins. Yeah. Paul, uh, what, Paul, tell me what in the world happened. What do you think the thought well, process was there? You know, I I. I... <sighs> I can see what Christian was talking about when he when he chose that because I think he chose that category because they knew that they were good at it, and they didn't want to choose a category for the other team to steal. So I think they they went on that one. Like if they were to choose Star Wars, which everybody in Schmoville thought that they were going to choose that, if they wouldn't have gotten it right, obviously t top ten would have gotten it. I mean, so I think their strategy was to pick a category that they knew on their own and that maybe top 10 would be struggling with. However, when they got 1920s and 1960s and then when the multiple choice questions were a year off of each other, I mean, that, that got them. And that's where there's, there's uh, their struggles came in. And as you notice, there was no steals because of all of that, because again, uh, they, they got all the uh, 80s movies and then Schmoes got, you know, got four of them, but uh, just those other two just got them. 
Man, yeah, that was a tough one. Matt, what did you think of that choice? Movie release dates over so many other categories that they're strong as well. I see Harloff's thought process, which is they wanted to choose a category, but they felt strong in, which he did say they felt strong in, and also one that if they missed, Top 10 couldn't steal. Now, the story saying I want to answer, the way I see it is when it comes to Turner's Choice, you're only able to choose off of categories that are on the wheel and star wars wasn't on the wheel so if they wanted it they wouldn't have been sure. able to use it but I, I feel like they could have chose another category that they felt strong in that maybe you know maybe they could have lost a point or two points top 10 which can make a difference but i i just feel like I don't want to say it was overconfidence on their part. I see their logic, but, you know, at the end of the day, it wasn't really the best choice. Well, I mean, it's easy to say that hindsight is twenty twenty. We can all look back on this and be like, wow, what a horrible decision. At the time, they felt it was the right play, but... Okay, so you have movie release dates. When you do multiple choice, it's it's kind of like not even giving yourself an advantage. I feel like... Sometimes in multiple choice, it gives you kind of an advantage if you're kind of tossing around like, well, I don't know if it's Tom Hanks or Bill Murray. I'm not sure which answer it is, but if I get multiple choice, I can kind of narrow my process down. Mm-hmm. But on movie release dates, it's like, what movie, what year did uh, Batman with Michael Keaton come out? And you ask for multiple choice, and it's like 86, 1989. 80, yeah. <laughs> yes, that is, that is correct. <laughs> it's, like, it's like 85, 86, 87, 88, and it's like, God, well... Um, June 17th, uh, I believe, also. I think it was June 17th, 1989. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and, ge- ladies and gentlemen, Scott Mance on the mic. <laughs> no. It's Scott Mance! But it's just, it's like, okay, well, if you're going to play it that way with movie release dates, you might as well take the two-point shot, because it allows, it June doesn't 23rd, allow... Sorry, June 23rd, June 23rd, sorry. Uh, 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 <laughs> I was it. close. <laughs> oh, close as it gets you the points, Paul. <laughs> it's a good thing it's just the years and not uh, actual... But also, you have to look, they got... <laughs> If I'm mistaken, wasn't Metropolis one of their yes. questions? Yeah, oh, I was yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Metropolis. Now, it's a great movie, but that's not a movie where anyone I know is like, I remember standing online to see Metropolis. Well, Ro- Roka was there. That's what he said. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> he was at the. He was at the. Per- by the way, by the way, this podcast sponsored by the movie Metropolis. Check it out on Netflix now. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, that's a tough question. That is a tough question. But but like I was saying, even if you go, if you don't go multiple choice and you go for the two point question, it's very as good as top ten is. There's no way that they would be able to just pluck. It was 1974. There's no yeah, way. Yeah, they wouldn't There's have been no able way. to. Right. So I would have. You know, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty, and the schmoes are obviously way smarter than I am. But I, I don't know. I would have chose something that I know for a fact, like action adventure, Disney, something they know a lot about. Instead mm-hmm. of, and yeah, you may give top ten the chance to steal, but you also may have the chance yourselves to bury the top ten show. So yeah. it just it was an interesting play, just like Mark did in the championship against Roca, where mm-hmm. he just buzzed in and didn't answer. To, to you know, try to save points from John Roca. So it's an interesting strategy. I like what they were doing there. I like their thought process. It just, as happens sometimes, it didn't work out. It's like yeah. when I was talking to Frank earlier in the week, he used this analogy, and I'll use it here since he's not here. Imagine if you're a football fan when the Seattle Seahawks and the Patriots were in the Super Bowl, and instead of running the ball on the goal line, which they should have done, they passed it, and it got intercepted. They lost the Super Bowl. Same kind of thought process here. Yeah, they could have easily gone for action and adventure, and they may have gotten every one of them and buried top ten and won the match, but then again, they may not have. It just, it's a crapshoot sometimes, and the strategy just did not pay off right there. And if you guys in Schmoville, please, there was no fixing. That was not rigged. There's no conspiracy. It's not because they didn't throw it because top 10 is on hiatus and everybody was calling for it. So guys, just put the hands away from the keyboard. Take a deep breath. Watch it for what it is. It's fun. It's entertaining. Move on. That's that's all I got to say about that. There it is. And if I could take a second as well, guys, when you I just need to I need you to listen up real quick. When you do stuff like that, you are 
calling into question the integrity of Mark, Christian, Mark Riley, Cody, anybody that's been on the Schmodown, anybody that works on the Schmodown, you are taking a lot out of their integrity, and that's something that I don't like. Like, no. You can be critical of the Schmodown, we're critical of it here every week, but there comes a point where you're taking shots at, at the people that we, you know, I look up to and are giving us, let's be honest guys, they're giving us free entertainment. They don't have to do the Schmodown, they do it because they like it, because it's fun, and when you say it's rigged or, or say the fix is in because people want to get top ten over, it's absolutely absurd and yeah. should not ever be said. So I, I second you on that, Paul. And it's just, come on, man. Like, don't do it. We're here to have fun. Let's have fun with it. The fix is not in. Like they said on the show this week, if you think that it was fixed, you obviously don't know us. So I highly doubt that the Schmoes wanted to lose to top ten. I guarantee you they didn't. So knock it off. But I, uh, Yeah, that I, I agree with you guys. And also, when you guys say this, because – People were saying the same thing when Cody Miller played JT. They were like, well, of course the Olympic gold medalist won the game. It was rigged, of course. You're also basically telling Cody Miller, Matt Nose, and John Roca that they weren't good enough to beat these people on their own, that the games had to be rigged to make sure they win. And that's just unfair. And it's, it's rude is what it is because they don't have to do this. They don't have to take the time. They all have jobs. They're not getting paid to play in the Schmodown. They they can do other things, but they choose to spend the time to give you guys this free entertainment that's fun to watch. So just enjoy it. So the team you wanted to win, lost, move on. Don't say it's rigged. And also someone, I forget who it was, he made a great point in Schmovar where he was like, there is no gain or benefit from the Schmodown being rigged. It's not <laughs> like there's any money. There, there's no benefit from it. So why would they do it? Yeah, it just it makes Stay no sense. Mini rant. No sense. All right, well, let's okay. Let's move on to happier things. So in round three, uh, it was the wage around. It was an action adventure question. The top ten show nailed it. Plus three points. The Schmoes lost three. So after three rounds, top ten was up 17-6, to six, which at the time, like, it was blowing my mind because you just you didn't expect it because of how competitive the match was between Roka and Harloff and Roka and Ellis. It was so competitive down to the wire that it was just it was very impressive in that round, especially for the top ten show. That moves on to number four, the speed round, where top ten gets two points, the Schmoes get two points, John Roca finishes off with a Galaxy Quest answer, and it's the team top 10 KOing the Schmoes 19 to 8. We don't even need a round 5. So, you know, give me, Matt, if you will, your thoughts on a knockout from team top 10. Did you see it coming? No, because, I mean, Harloff and Ellis are two strong competitors, as are Nose and Roca, which is why. I was thinking this was going to be down to the last five-pointer. This was going to be like it, it was – I never would have – if someone had told me they were like, oh, this is going to be a knockout by top ten, I never would have believed them. It, it was just unexpected. I mean, good on top ten's part. They played a fantastic game, but I yeah. never would have expected them to knock out the schmoes. Yeah, I'm with you, Paul. What, what did you think about it? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I, I was shocked as well. I, I do like the new format that they put together. Uh, so we didn't have to have another round, uh, because again, it's like in baseball, you know, that if the team's winning and they're the home team, they don't have to bat in the bottom of the ninth. So it's one of those types of things. It's like taking a knee uh, at the end of a game, if you have possession in football. So it kind of, it's kind of cool like that, that they did, uh, change that up. I honestly was gunning for top 10 to win is I'm a, I'm a, I'm a outlaw nation member. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, like it was a tough, it was a tough matchup between the two. And I did in, enjoy the fact that it was a knockout because of that shock factor. Like it, it was amazing to see that. Um, I mean, it, when I looked at that uh, round four uh, question, it was the um, Robin hood uh, question with the Oscar Isaac one. I believe that's what it was. Mm -hmm. And it, it's amazing on how preference 
comes into play. If you don't think it's a good movie, most of the time you kind of forget about it. And so mm -hmm. if, uh, if they didn't think it was a good movie or not, that probably wasn't in the forefront of their minds. And uh, as you can see, Roka, um, many times on Movie Talk, many times on Top 10, a lot of movies they don't like, people don't like, he actually likes. I mean, look at the Transformers movies. He says he likes those. Everyone hates them. And it's really interesting to see that he enjoys movies people don't like. And so maybe he remembered that because he actually enjoyed the movie. And it was more mm -hmm. in his forefront of his mind. So the strategy of preference, is it's amazing to think that. But that seemed to come into play. And just to end on Galaxy Quest, yeah, I threw my hands up like because that's, that's <laughs> one of my favorite movies, too. Uh, it's one of the most underrated. In fact, the Trekkies out there voted it higher than Into Darkness on their top yeah. Star Trek movies, which whatever. But um, that's yeah, neither here nor there. But <laughs> I enjoyed seeing um, that knockout because, again, it was unexpected. And uh, I, I kind of t t tip my hat to him for, uh, for Roka coming back from losing that finals match. And then finally getting some gold. So it was retribution for the outlaw nation and uh, I'm a firm supporter in them and congratulations to them. Man, that, that is an excellent point. I didn't even think about, like I think about movies that I don't like and how much like I don't remember from them. That is a, such a great yeah. point that that never crossed my mind. So, I mean, kudos to you for that. That's, that's a great point. Hold on. Let, let me bring back my favorite thing I've, I've done for a while. I haven't done it. Thank you. Hey, thank you. There it is. You got I mean, it. Is, it is a great point because when you think about it, like a movie you don't like, you're not likely to go back and to watch it multiple times, pick up on things, or watch behind the scenes documentaries, or listen to commentaries, <laughs> which is where this trivia stuff can come from. Right. So that is a really great point, you know, that. You know, if you don't like a movie. But the Schmoes did win one thing in that match. They had the better entrance. I mean, Harloff's where he just flips him off without even looking at them. <laughs> I was cracking up. That was great. So they won the best entrance. Well, anybody, hey. can, anybody can buy themselves a belt. So. Hey, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Hey, man. You can have all the flash and flair you want, but it, it happen what matters is what happens between the ropes, they say. Absolutely. And what happened between the ropes was an absolute knockout, an amazing performance by the top ten show. Had to feel good. They weren't having the best of weeks. Let's yeah. be honest with you without going into too much. Wasn't a good week for the top ten show. And it was good to see them, you know, get happy and top ten boom by A to get in there and it was a lot of fun to watch, and it was I think it was a better match than, you know, it, it kind of looks like a blowout on paper, but it was a better match than, you know, I think the score indicates. So after the match, we find out that Team Top 10 will be in the Schmodown Spectacular, obviously, defending their tag titles against either Team Heroes or Team Patriots, which we will get to a little bit later. Interesting matchup there but a little bit more interesting in the post-match interview. And guys, I say this every show, so I should probably stop saying it, but you should also listen. You have to listen to these post-match interviews. They are so fun, and they give you a little bit of insight into what's going on. Christian and Mark are not going to compete in the Schmodown Spectacular as a team at all. And it seemed, you know, me being a, a big pro wrestling fan, I, it seemed like a little dissension in the ranks. Because they said they were going to go back and retool and rethink some things, which generally means a split. So I don't know if we're going to see... I don't know when we're going to see Team Schmoes again. Guys, what do you think, Paul? I want to start with you. Sure. What do you think about the possibility of Team Schmoes dissolving for a little while? I, I see it as a good thing. I, I almost kind of see it as Harloff letting Ellis go into his own thing and focus on the, the singles match uh, yeah. to make it... To make it uh, kind of less pressure on him um and it, you you hit it like the, it's the wwe factor of it i mean i've got my my enzo and cast shirt on right now um right on. but uh it's it's just one of those things where i think there might be a little split and uh, if uh if he's gotta you know get a new partner uh, or you know let ellis do his own thing i mean it, it it seems like it's the right time uh to focus on other things i mean harloff's got um got Makuga coming up for the Revenge of the Blue Fairy. That's <laughs> oh, dear. Um, and it's the Blue Fairy, not a Blue Fairy, as Sasha pointed out. But it's um, it's going to be interesting to see. And there are more interesting uh, 
you know, competitors in the team matchup that would uh, probably want to get that spotlight. And so backing off a little bit, I think would be definitely good for, for the, uh, for the tournament or for the, uh, the team times. There it is, Matt. What do you think? Um, you know, now as a non WWE fan, I have how, how dare you make these references. Get out. So get out for, Mute him. for all Mute you, him. but this is good for all the schmovillians <laughs> who are also like me. So they get a perspective. Of, oh, well, I have choice too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the for those of you who can't see, we are just we are just honestly showing our toys to each other in the camera. So just <laughs> just let that be known. Go, I'm sorry, Matt. Go ahead. Um, go. But this kind of makes sense because you have to think Ellis is going up against Dan Marl, who is a guy who has shown no weaknesses in the Schmodown yet, and he's going up against him. It might be a good thing to just not have to have the weight of also being in team matches, to, you know, to be on top of him. He really should be focusing on getting the belt. And you also have Harloff wants to go on his revenge dark. He wants to go after Makuga, Andy Signor, and Roka. It kind of just makes sense that if you add the team, you know, match matches into that, it just sort of takes time away from the singles, which I think they want to focus a little bit more on. So it, it makes it made sense to me. It was a little upsetting when I first heard it, but then I was thinking, I was like, it really just does make sense. And it, I think it, it will be a better thing for the two of them, you know, to just focus on their singles. Makes sense. I, You know, I have another thought here. Like, have you guys noticed, and, and you know, stop me if I'm off track here, but is there something brewing between Christian and Matt Nost? Have you did you notice that? Because I say yes. I say yes. this because on the live show, and you know, we're not here to recap the live show, but but it was Schmo Down related, so I'll go into it. But <laughs> Christian said, you know, when they were talking about the, the recap of the match, Christian said, Yeah, John Roca did a great job. Never <laughs> mentioned Matt Nost. Yeah. Nothing like that. So I you know, I even messaged Christian and was like, what's the deal with, you know, what's the deal with you and Matt Nost? And he said, all he said was, in a year, nobody's going to know who Matt Nost is. <laughs> that's that's all he said. And I was, <laughs> I don't know where this came from. I I don't know why this is happening, but, but let me start with you, Matt. What do you think of a possible matchup between Christian and Matt Nost? How do you think I that think could go? This is going to happen even not with what you just said about your personal message, because he did mention Nose. He said John Roca had a great game, and Matt Nose made jokes. I feel there's a bit of saltiness between Harloff and Nose because okay. they did lose, and they got knocked out, and it's probably not fun to hear from Nose sitting, making his jokes, and Harloff is the type of guy who he... He gets into these matches, you know, you saw that when he challenged Makuga, you know, that blue fairy thing really bothers him. I think this matchup is going to happen. I think we're going to see a similar Harloff to the one we saw before he played Signor, where he was very <coughs> intense and very, like, ready to just, you know, go at it with him. And I'm really interested to see how he is, you know, how Nost is going to play this. You know, so I think this match is going to happen. Um, given what, you know, Harloff said that he's not, you know, I wonder if that means he's predicting that he's going to beat Nose so bad that Nose will never want to compete again. Uh, you know, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that match. There you have it. Paul, what do you think, man? Harloff needs a win. If you look in the history of the last few matches he's had, he has not won. He's he's been he's going over right now. I mean, he's the team matchups, uh, the tournament, even before that. So, I think he's possibly picking Nost because he might be the easiest to go after to get that win. Because okay. right now it's it's almost like the that uh, Cobster needs to set up the, you know, the the thirty for thirty for Harloff right now for how he's had a meteoric fall. Uh -oh. uh, so un honestly, this is just being honest here because he's not had a win. Um, and I actually, in the back of my head, when they had that little post-match interview, what if Ellis and Nost team up? Oh, okay. Ooh. I think that would be a very interesting team. Um, just, I don't. That was just something that popped in my head when I heard that. 
Oh, so man. maybe, maybe there's a little bit of work going on, a little, little bit of a storyline going on there where that might happen down the road because of the jealousy that Harloff might have, again, this is storyline, uh, might have against how successful Ellis has been and then how popular Top 10 is with Nost and Roca. So I think there might be a little dissension there because of the fact, again, he hasn't won in a while. I mean, he lost to Roca blindfolded. Uh, he lost the tag <laughs> titles. So, I mean, there's he has nothing. He has he's really nothing to lose. So he's just going to throw it all out there. So I think that's why he's pulling it off everybody back, and he's picking the picking out the a guy who he thinks he could possibly win, kind of like being up a jobber in the WWE. But Nost Ooh. is no, but, but Nost is no jobber. Um, JTE on the other hand, but we'll move on from there. Uh, that's that's it. That's all I got to say about that part. That's a really good point. That maybe there is a little bit of. Just even between Ellis and Harloff of how El- Ellis is doing great. He, he before John Roca broke the point record, he broke it. And then he beat Roca and won the ultimate showdown. He could possibly be the singles champ. There might just be a little bit of like, you know, just annoyance with that. Your, your, your teammate is doing so well outside the team and you're not even doing well with the guy who's doing so well outside the team so maybe that that's a good point maybe yeah. there's a little bit of Dang, for me. nailed it nailed <laughs> it and uh yeah i mean matt knows may not be a jobber maybe he's enhancement talent we'll see um going for <laughs> the same term <laughs> <laughs> but all i'm saying is um if let me just make this point if you see a post in schmoville or the schmodown movie trivia schmodown facebook page where Harloff asks somebody if they can construct a fake barbershop window. There's oh, a little, no. <laughs> there's a little, there's a little inside, uh, inside wrestling term for you there if you know what I'm talking about. Just beware that something's happening down the road. So, what does Ice Cube have to do with this? Um, oh, okay, get out. Oh, oh. Get out. Matt, you're too what? young. You're too young, man. I'm sorry I'm making movie that's references that's just, that's just, my friend. out of a that's movie that's trivia <laughs> recap show. Do you... Do you have a My you have a, bad. Uh, YouTube it, son? Come on. All right, let's let's move on. Let's talk about the singles match this week, which was a showdown of an all female contingent. Which you know, like we said, we welcome that. It was Kara Warner making her showdown debut, going up against Sasha Pearl Raver making her singles debut. It started off kind of slow with Kara getting one point in the first round, Sasha getting four. Round two, Kara comes with comedy, gets three of four for four points, and a one-point steal to total five points in the round. Sorry if that ran together. Sasha rolls Sandra Bullock, goes three for four, gets six points out of that, stole one point from Kara to take a total of seven. Then we go to round three, which was just an awful round for Kara. Just That's how it goes sometimes with the questions. And we ended up getting a TKO, as Sasha Pearl Raver TKOs Kara Warner, eleven to six. Matt, I'm going to start with you this time. What did you think of this match overall? What are your thoughts? Um, I had fun with this match. I'm going to say that it was great to see more females compete in the Schmodown because it has become a bit of a boys' club. So it's great to see more than just Gray Drake and Clark Wolf. It's great to see new female competitors. I'll be the first to say. It was a low-scoring match um, compared to other ones. We did just get out of the ultimate Schmodown. But I I have a bone to pick with a lot of people in Schmoville, which is all these people. And this is not just with Sasha and Kara. This is just in matches in general. These people who just attack and they sit there and they're like, how did they not get that Indiana Jones question? How did they not get this? I could have got that, you know. You say that when you're sitting behind your computer and you're able to pause it and have more than 10 seconds to answer and you're, you know, you're able to Google it maybe, you know, why don't you go to the Schmodown, sit under the lights, have John Campier or Harloff time you down, go five, four, and see how good you do. Now, getting back, I'm sorry, that was my mini rant. I had to do it. <laughs> getting back to the match. It was worth I had a lot of fun. It's oh, Sasha is great. She she's a great on screen presence, and her when she calls out Finstock during which again watch these post match interviews and Finstock shows up. That was just uh, the part where Finstock's just like you you asked me to go down, 
and that so that's a match I'm looking forward to. Uh, so, yeah, stuff. it was a it was a fun match. Also, uh, did they plan the Gremlin thing, or was that a real just coincidence? I don't know, but I like it. Sasha wearing the evil Gremlin, and then you had Kara wearing Gizmo. Oh, I didn't see that they were. I didn't see that they were different. But that's an interesting, uh, interesting yeah. little tidbit there. I like that. All right, Paul. What did you think of this match? Yeah, I did. I did notice that that one had Gizmo, one had Stripe. So yeah, it was really kind of cool. Um, mm -hmm. I tell you what. Um, in sports, a win is a win, no matter how ugly it, it is. So yeah, Schmoville out there. I completely agree with Matt. What Matt said there. Lay off. I know we just we just got off of the uh, the best of the best, the rank, the top ranked people. The tournament was was amazing. Everything was nail biting. Everything was entertaining. And then you came with, as some people are saying, the ultimate letdown with this matchup. But guys, it, you know, we're bringing in a new crop of talent. Uh, we saw Sasha before with the team matchup with Miri, but now we've got Sasha on her own. And yeah, lover or hater, Sasha, I mean, I'm going to continue the love with her. She's entertaining, she's knowledgeable, and she knows her stuff. Now, again, it's the same thing. Like, for, for some reason, this is the first matchup where I actually, when I started seeing all the missed questions, I was like, I was answering along with everything too um, as I was washing dishes. I was, I was lo listening to the show while I'm doing dishes. It's weird. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm listening to it and I'm like, shouting the answers out and i'm like you know, i've never kept score so i kept score for for just the heck of it and I, for the first time did that and i tell you what the three questions that kara got in the last that last round that four, one three and five question i went i put my hands up too like i i couldn't get it like but all the other ones i was like it was it, i wasn't rattling them off but i i we, we talked about this on the uh on facebook too mm -hmm. is the fact that next time i'm gonna try to keep score i'll play as one person not both because I, I racked up about 18 points of answering for both people. Mm -hmm. So if, I, if I'm going to do that next time, I'll do that uh, with just one person. But I seem to have gotten into it more with this one than any of the other ones. So I, I don't know what it was, but I paid attention more to this one. And I played along that for, for the first time on this one. I Again, don't know why, but just it, I did. And I, I tell you what, go under those lights, guys. I mean, I would... I, I love the fact that they're actually going to do this at that uh, the Los Angeles Comic Con. They're going to showcase how tough it might be under that. And as as a special education teacher myself, if you are trying to think of something in your head and you're trying to think of the answer in your head, all mental, not writing things down, not you know, it's all about that learning style. As you're listening, you know, trying to think of that answer in your head, like Sasha was doing, and then you hear five, four, three. To, that's going to interrupt your inner monologue, if you will. And so that that's tough. That coupled with, you know, everyone watching you. And it's just to me, I mean, it's it's got a lot to do with that. And, you know, the, the performance, you know, anxiety uh, as well, because you can sit back like like me washing dishes in my house, answering questions off and on and on and on and on and on. But then getting under the lights, getting on that pressure, you know, it's like practice versus the game. That's kind of what it was. And 11 to six, nothing to scoff at. A win is a win. You've seen football matches seven to three, three to nothing, but it's still a win. So those of you complaining out there, again, take the take your two finger toots out the way. Oh, get, the, get the trolls ooh. out the way. Love it for what it is. Stop complaining about it. it it's it, there's no room for that. We're here because of the schmoes, because of the schmodown. It is all related to each other. So circle of life. Be well, love all, be all. I mean, seriously, just calm it down, guys. It was a fun match. You know, it's not all sunshine and rainbows, though, because I do have a critique of Kara Warner. Let's let's, let's set the record straight. i got to put it on Front Street. Listen, it's the same. I, I say this with my friends all the time. We're adults. We have jobs. You make money. Why are you coming out with Pat's Blue Ribbon? <laughs> no. That's my only critique of Kara Warner. That's all I got. But other than that, it's a fun match. Seriously, get a different beer. But like, Your beer preference is your only critique of her. That's great. You well, know, yeah, you know I, I have a theory. I have a theory there. Oh, here we go. Okay. Was, was, that, was that a ploy to maybe get a Sasha shirt instead of PBR? Oh. It's SPR. And probably, probably get somebody to design a shirt based on that logo. Maybe that was a ploy. 
I'm going to introduce a new segment on the show called Paul's Conspiracy Corner, and this was the, <laughs> this was the first entry. Nailed it. Thank you. And I got I got I got to make up for lost time, man. It's been a while. <laughs> it could be that would be an amazing shirt. People of Schmoville, you have been summoned. Make that shirt. Make that shirt right now. It'd be a nice compliment to the wild man. Come on, do it. Come on. Nice. Do it. Yeah, there you go. But, okay, all BS aside, I thought the match was fine. I thought they had a good time with it. For people, like, for someone to go up against, you know, they've said they're really good friends. It's tough. It was fun. It was Kara's first time. Lay off, everybody. It's been said. I thought it was fun. I want to see Kara, and I want to see Sasha again. I There is nothing, like, I thought for a while I want to see, you know, of course I want to see Ellis and Merle. Of course, I want to see top ten versus Patriots or Heroes. But what has leaped up to the top of my most anticipated match list is now Sasha versus Finstock. I want to see that match more than anything now. Give it to me now. Splice in your Ken Watanabe from Godzilla. Let them fight. I want to see it now. And that is my most anticipated match. I, I cannot wait to see that matchup. That's going to be great. <laughs> that that will make for great Schmodown TV for sure. But let's yeah. jump into it now. Now we're doing preview time. The, the post-matches are over. Let's talk about this week's now number one contenders match between Team Patriots of Jeff Snyder and JTE at 1-0 as a team versus Robert Meyer Burnett and John Schnepp of Team Heroes also at 1-0. Adam, let's we'll start with you on this one. Who you got? You know, I got Team Patriots, and here's the reason why. Patriots uh, knocked out Mega Powers with the old rules in effect, where in round two, you couldn't, um, you can only talk on one of the answers, and they did great in round two. Think about what it's going to be like now that they can converse on every single question in round two. I have to say, I love Robert Martin Burnett, and I love John Schnapp. They got lucky getting comic book movies in the wheel. The wheel was in their favor that day. It may not be this time. And also, Schnapp is not the greatest at trivia. Uh, yeah. Robert was yeah, kind of his good. crutch, and I think when you have... Listen, JTE kind of sucks at singles, but he still knows his movies, and we have someone like Snyder, who's pretty good at trivia on a team together. I don't think relying on one guy, I mean, okay, box office breakdown, sure, JTE had Finstock, but even Finstock could get, you know, if they got the category, he'd do pretty well, but I just, I think Patriots are going to be too strong for Heroes, nothing against Team Heroes, I just think Patriots are too good of a team up that I'd be surprised if they lost. Fair enough. Paul, what do you got for me? I'm going to have to second what Matt said, man. Uh, as much as I dislike the Patriots, has nothing to do with the football team. <laughs> uh, as much as Snyder, right away when he was first on Movie Talk, rubbed me the wrong way, I can totally see Pete, the Team Patriots running over and knocking out Team Heroes because, you know, the last couple times that I've seen Heroes perform, it has been Burnett taking taking it over and Schnepp just kind of. Yeah, kind of like being a deer in headlights and, and kind of caring and, and kind of not, you know, being that strength of that team unless it gets to, you know, the comic book stuff or, or maybe old sci-fi or something like that. But, you know, it again goes with the fact that Schnepp might not be a verbal type of person. He's more of a writing it down type of person. And, and you know, again, again, learning style comes into effect. Um, but I, I seriously strongly look at this as JTE finally getting his win that he needs. But then if you go even further than that, it was not, you know, Team Patriots against Top 10, you've got a quote-unquote heel team in Top 10, which I don't know what people call Roka a heel. I love the heels. So to me, he's not a villain to me. He's, he's very entertaining. He's a great character as, as the outlaw. Uh, and it's going to be entertaining with seeing JTE and he, seeing him being the, his cocky self, trying to showcase, you know, hey, we were here, we made it, you know, just the entertainment factor of that. But, you know, with going back to Team Heroes, you know, seeing their last match when they won, 
eating pizza, drinking beer, just doesn't seem like they are truly as into it. I mean, that might be a character uh, that they that they're perceiving, but it just to me, I'm like, you, as fun as it is, you know, you do have to kind of take it sort of seriously. I mean, he, they really weren't really to me taking it as seriously as I think everybody else has so far. I mean, coming out yeah. with you know drinking beer and eating pizza while they're playing, and and again, I just. Uh, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit, and I love both of those guys, and I love watching you know the their shows and, and, and hearing their insight with comic books and knowing how much they know about it. Uh, but in this case, Patriots, I think, are, are going to kind of steamroll them. Uh, you know, it's it's I, Paul, I'm with you, man. It's me and John Schnapp have, or excuse me, John Schnapp and I have a love-hate relationship on the, as terms of Schmodown. I'm with you. I hated the optics of John Schnepp and Robert Meyer Burnett eating pizza and drinking beer at the desk with no coaster. And I <laughs> was not a... I, was not I, a thought I, was OC, I thought I was OCD that. I never <laughs> thought of it. My goodness. I, wa- I watch a lot of Frasier. Um, but <laughs> but uh, he just... It, yeah, it rubbed me the wrong way. Schnepp just... I said it before, and I'll just, I'll just reiterate here. It's when he gets, when they ask him a question, and he goes into his scramble, scramble, flipple, flopple. I I can't stand it. Like I, I'm done. I'm out. You know, it's not a, it's not indicative of who he is as a person. I, I've listened to Heroes. I see him on Collider Video. I've seen the Death of Superman Lives. I bought a copy. It's I have no problems with John Schnepp personally. Robert Byron Burnett, fantastic guy. Will be a guest on the show in the future, but you're going Shameless up against plug. Hey, now cheap pop. Um, <laughs> so, so you're going, you're going up against Team Patriots, JT, Jeff Snyder. Which guys, I'm going to tell you, me personally, I think outside of top ten, who are the new champions, even more so than the Schmoes, is the strongest team in this league. Jeff Snyder is a buzzsaw. Yes, he lost to Sam Levine doesn't matter. Him and JTE together is borderline unfair because it's a team where, yeah, in with top 10 you seem to see John Roca answering more than no's, but they do combine a lot. Jeff Snyder and JTE are almost of the same brain. Like They are so... They are two strong competitors and I just don't see how Team Heroes unless... That wheel, man, unless they roll comic book movies again and they're able to keep it away from JTE and Jeff Snyder. I just don't see how Team Heroes can get enough points to defeat Team Patriots. I just don't see it happening. I think JTE and Jeff Snyder are way too strong to lose to this team. And as for Team Top 10 versus Patriots in the Spectacular, if that happens, I think it would be a great matchup. I think and this could be my conspiracy corner, I think it would even be awesome fun if no matter who won that match if the Patriots and team top 10 joined forces and became a stable a la the four horsemen it's another wrestling reference Matt sorry and joined forces together and combined to make a super team faction that's something that I want to see that's something I think the Schmodown needs more of I think they need factions yeah they have teams but I think they need factions and that's just me talking. I don't know what your thoughts are, are on it, Paul, because I know you're a wrestling guy. Factions a thing? Yes, no, maybe. You is know what? If uh, I'm sorry, uh, if um, if that inner geekdom thing works out, where it's like the five on five or whatever, if they do something like a family feud, they do a four on four because <clears throat> they've got two desks there. I mean, you've got the wanger table and you've got the regular table. So if you do that, have four on one side and then four on the other, I could see. I could see that happening. That would be something that uh, that could be a, a cool thing down the road. Uh, yeah, definitely for that. Well, Matt, what do you think about some factions, a little team action? Uh, well, you know, I do get the reference to the Four Horsemen. I did see X-Men Apocalypse, so, oh. you know, I get that. Get out. And get I out. read the Bible. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. So, okay, well, um, okay, fair enough. Yeah, sure. I think... That's where, I mean, that is, that is where they got... The Four Horsemen from the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. So that's, that's where they got, they got the name from. Anyone. But I think that could be a really fun idea. 
Um, especially since that could be something to help the Schmodown grow. Just get it, you know, we got singles, we got teams, now maybe we all have factions. I think that would be great, because I would just love to see, I think, yeah, I think Top 10 and Patriots going together, that makes a lot of sense. I would love to see, you know, who the other combinations would be, but that's something I would want to see. Um, yeah, I love that idea. All right, mark that. Put that the feather in the cap. All right, let's move on to the singles match this week. We have a double dip of Jeff Snyder this week. He is one and one going up against Jason Inman, who is also one and one. They are both coming off singles losses, as Jeff Snyder lost to Sam Levine and Jason Inman lost to Harlow. Now, of course, we said earlier that Inman is lobbying for a chance at the Interdictum Championship. A win could assure his spot. Matt, I'm going to start with you on this one. Jason Inman, Jeff Snyder, where are you leaning? Um, this is really difficult because I love Inman, but if I'm going off of their performances in the Schmodown, I have to kind of just give the slight edge to Snyder. I think the people he's played, he's done better at. I mean, he lost to Sam Levine, but Sam Levine is one of the best competitors, and it wasn't a blowout. Ah, I hate to say it, because Snyder is such a heel, but I I just have to get that slight edge to Snyder. Fair enough. Paul, where are you leaning? At, At first, on paper, it's a meh to me, but when I'm looking at the two, as much as I'm on Twitter, on Facebook, I'm seeing a lot more activity on Jeff Snyder's side with, with, with rumors, with, with news. It seems to me, of course, I, I don't know about Inman, but I don't see his as, as much. I think Snyder's got more knowledge. I think he's got more history. I think he, he knows a little bit more. And like I said, as heck, Sasha at the beginning rubbed me the wrong way and I came, I came to love her. And as of right now, Snyder's moving up that ladder to me too. Uh, I think because of his his knowledge, because of, of what he's doing in the movie universe, I think he's got the slight edge uh, against Jason Inman. So I'm going to go Snyder on this one too. Okay. Oh man. Two to, and if I sorry, two I, I, I yeah, one more point. One more point. To to anyone listening to to Christian to whomever is, is listening to this, I think if Inman really wants in the Inner Geekdom Champion match at the Spectacular, make that be the stakes for this match. If Inman wins, he's in. Ooh, if he's oh, not, no. if he loses, he's out. Wow. Let's do that. Yeah. That's what we would call a stipulation. I like it. That's that's a great idea. Christian, Mark, whoever's whoever's doing this, make this happen. Whoever's making these rules, because it's not us, make it happen. <laughs> that's a great idea. That is a fantastic idea. I want to see, just as an aside, I do want to see more stipulations in these showdowns as well. Because I know Christian was talking about him and Makuga doing like more or less a loser leaves town matchup, where whoever loses can't compete in the Schmodown for a year. So I would, I would love to see something like that where different different stakes are added. It's like okay, well if you do this, then you can get this kind of reward. Well if you lose, then you're out. You can't be a team anymore or something like that. So that's a great idea. It reminds me of the Rocky trivia match between JT and Finstock when Finstock put the Stallone mug up. It's like, you know, sometimes stuff like that just makes these matches that much more fun to watch because you're like, well, now, like, you know, oh, if Makuga loses to Harloff, he's not able to play for a year, you know, and that also may make people step up their game, you know. So I, that's a really great idea. I would like to see more of that, what you're talking about with Finstock. I would like to see more of that, too, like... uh you know, somebody has a signed piece of Doctor Strange art that they want to put on the line against somebody because they think they can beat him. That could be fun. Like a like a like in college football, they have traveling trophies for rivalries. Mm-hmm. That would be kind of fun. Like if you have a, a good rivalry going, like put something on the line. I think that would be a lot of fun. Even if it's not a championship, just something fun, like a trophy. Yeah, a little trophy, something fun like that. I think could be very cool. Um, sorry, getting we got off track there. Getting back to the prediction. My fault. Um, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. It was a good point. It was a great point. We had to, we had to discuss. Hard but, off um, listening to this. I'm kind of on the side with you guys of Jeff Snyder. I'm on that side. I'm going to go a little bit further, though. I think Jeff Snyder KOs Jason Edmund in this match. I think Jeff Snyder is an absolute buzzsaw. 
I think he is a great heel until Roka came with the Outlaw, but now the Outlaw's kind of moved mm-hmm. out of heel status into more of a, a tweener, as we would say. And he's now it's Jeff Snyder's turn to be a heel again. I want to see it. I think Jeff Snyder is a fantastic competitor. I he's see- also a great guy. I, I've talked with him in sure. Mobile when he's competed. Like, he commented on my, um, I did a trailer where it was, like, just for the schmo down overall, like, a bunch of, like, the best sub modes, and I left out Snyder, sadly. He's like, you know, what am I, chop liver? And we started talking. He He's really, like, he's one of those people, just like Roko, when you talk to them in Schmobo or something, you're like, oh, that heel is just a persona. Because he, he's really great, so I wouldn't I wouldn't hate to see him. Because he, yeah. he was a nice guy to talk to. Absolutely. So it's a 3-0 sweep. We're all taking Jeff Snyder to beat Jason Inman this week. Let's see what happens. I'd like to and see if it. Inman wins. <laughs> well, that's all right. That's fine. That's, I mean, that's I'm why this is... I think Inman is a great guy. I just think he's a little bit too into the comic book world to where Snyder's more into the movie world, and I think that could be helpful. Well, well everybody... Mean... Yeah, I was going to say, everybody is uh, counting out the Indians in this World Series. Everybody's Cubs, Cubs, Cubs. Yet my Cleveland Indians are up two games to one. Nobody's counting them out. I mean, everybody's counting them out, I should say. And so who knows? Inman could be that guy that uh, everyone's counting them out. He can, uh, maybe that's motivation. They just got to call Vaughn in and they'll win. Yeah, call Rick, <laughs> yeah call brought Rick it back Vaughn. to movies. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I... Yeah. I got to tow my team, man. That's, that's cool. All of this, we're going to get out of here. But before we go... I want to see what everybody's doing. I want to know where everybody can be found. So, Matt, I want to start with you. What's going on with you? Where can you be found online? Um, online, you guys can follow me at Hearns underscore Matthew. You can also find my YouTube channel, MattMovie611. That's where I post um, my Schmodown trailers, which if you guys are not members of Schmoville, uh, you probably haven't seen. I do... Um, Trailers for the Schmodowns. I hype them. I, I make them look like real movie trailers. Um, and I think I've kind of inspired the actual Schmoes because I've seen those promos coming out. So uh, you'll definitely see um, Dan Merle and Mark Ellis. So that trailer. So you guys can find that and just come and support me. I do movie reviews. So There you go. There you have it. Paul, in his grand return, welcome back, sir. I'm giving you the clap. Thank you very much. Good thank stuff. you. Thank you. Where can you be found online? What's going on with you? Tell us what's happening. Well, I'll tell you once again, thank you so much for having me on. I'm glad I was able to get back on it. Uh, I've missed it. And all of you guys that have been on uh, Schmoville asking where I've been, you know, I don't really want to post that on Facebook and and talk about it like that. Uh, It's water under the bridge. Everything's cool. I am so happy that I was able to be here and join you guys. And hopefully it's not the last. Um, I am on Facebook. Uh, just find me under Paul Wolf, obviously. Uh, w U L F F is the last name. Um, if you want to follow my teacher page, I have a teacher page. I post videos. I actually do uh, YouTube videos uh, for math uh, to try to make math a little bit more fun than it already isn't. And uh, so that's a that's under Mr. Wolf, just M R Mr. Wolf. Uh, and then on Twitter, I am at the Mr. Wolf, and Instagram the Mr. Wolf twelve. There you have it. And, yeah, I mean, you and I have been talking back and forth for a while trying to get you on, and, you know, schedules sometimes don't match up. But it was my intention for a long time to have you on. I'm glad that we finally got to hook up and connect. And, as always, guys, you can find me on Twitter, at AT Titanium. I post, you know, in Schmoville and the Schmo- Movie Trivia Schmodown page. You can find me there. You can argue with me. You'll find me in the YouTube <laughs> comments answering your critiques and comments. I love all the positive. I love all the negative. I love it all because if that wasn't there, then I wouldn't be here doing this. Hopefully Frank will be back next week. I'm not sure what his status is. Like I said, things happen. But uh, I want to thank everybody for listening to this episode, checking it out, and continuing to support this show. I really appreciate it. I want to thank Christian for uh, hooking me up with Mark this week. I want to thank Mark for taking the time. And, uh, you know, until next week, guys, we'll see you. We're out. See ya. Go Tribe.